Okay, it started. Yes, sir, it started. Okay. Uh, good morning, guys. Again, this is welded connections. This comes under module two. So, as far as theory part is concerned, just I'm going to go uh, real fast uh, because you can study it yourselves. It is self-explanatory, and wherever a little explanation is needed in the theory part, I'm going to explain it. So, once once I go to the problem and design part, I'm going to explain more. So here, these are the advantages of welded connection. So there are several, ad several advantages. So the speed of fabrication and direction helps in reducing the project completion period, of course. So fabrication is very fast in case of welded connection and also erection of the structures. And also welded design offers the opportunity to achieve a more efficient use of materials and there is no need to make holes in the members like in bolted connections as there are no deduction for drilled holes involved in the design a welded connection results in a member with a smaller cross section what it means is see when you go to design of compression and tension member especially design of tension members sometimes as a result of the drilling of holes that particular area of cross section where we have drilled holes for the bolt, uh, the strength gets reduced. So that is going to design the size of the member. As a result, to make the design safe, what we do is we are going to go for higher section or we are going to give more area of cross section, okay, to make up for the loss of area due to the presence of bolt holes. So when it comes to welded connection, so we don't have to drill any holes. So whatever the section we are going to get is going to be efficient. Okay, that is one of the advantages. Okay. And also, weld offers the best method of achieving a rigid connection. See, whenever we have, in case of bolted connection, of course, we can have a rigid connection. But the thing is, when it comes to the welded connection, so by default, it is going to be rigid. So once it is rigid at the support, moment is is going to develop at the supports. Okay, once the moment develops, that is going to be hogging or negative moment. So that reduces the positive moment almost at the midsection. So that's that results in the reduced sectional area required. Okay, once the reduced sectional area is provided, it results in the saving of the material and also we can reduce the story height. Okay, reduce the story height in the sense, say for example, if we need uh, this one ISMB 450. Okay, so if you are providing bolted connection 450, oh, sorry, not if you are providing bolted connection. So normally for a simply supported beam 450, once you make it welded at the supports because of the negative bending moment, as I said, positive bending moment reduces. That may result in, say, ISMB 350 or 400. So that reduces the height of the eye section. So that way we can maintain the same ceiling height. Overall, we can reduce the height of the building itself. So it may not make much difference when we are going for two, three stories. But when you go for 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 stories, so even that 10 centimeter difference makes a lot okay so welded joints are better for fatigue loads the fatigue loads those are the road loads which create both compression and tension in members at different times so um, that is welded joints are efficient that way okay and also a properly welded joint is stronger than the joint material itself so what it means is so if you weld two members together, two steel members together, so when you subject that joint until failure, the weld normally will not fail. Weld will always be stronger than the parent material. Instead of the weld failing, the members themselves may fail. Okay, that is another advantage of a welded connection. And we have several such advantages. So which I'm not going to go through. So 
going to, of course, we have 15, and going to disadvantages, of course, it requires highly skilled labor. So inspection of welded joints is, is difficult and expensive. It is difficult means what is inside the well, we cannot make out. Whether entrapped air is there, some slag is entrapped within the well, that reduces the strength of the weld. So that is really hard to make out. Okay, that is one of the disadvantages. And to make welds, you need costly equipments. And also, you have to take proper precautions. And the possibility of brittle fracture is more in welded connections than in bolted connections. So when it comes to bolted connections, the joints will be semi-rigid, not 100% rigid, okay? Or it may be even flexible connection. But when it comes to welded connection, it is going to be rigid. That may result in brittle fracture of the joint, okay? So that is another disadvantage of the welded connection. So here we have types of welds. What are the different types of welds? And we have got questions in the question papers during different times. Recently, December 15, January 16. It does not mean that it, didn't, it did not appear after December 15, January 16. It has appeared, but I have not written down that. Okay. So these are the main four types of welds. Groove welds are butt welds, fillet welds, slot welds, and plug welds. See, here in the design, we mainly design this type of weld, fillet welds, because that is a weld that is widely used in, con con in construction industries, okay, whenever we need to weld different members. And of course, we are going to use groove welds, but not to this extent. And uh, slot welds and plug welds, we are going to use for special cases, okay, but that is not widely used, okay. So point A is groove welds. So if you look here, we have different types of groove welds. So groove welds, square, single V, double V, single bevel, double bevel, etc., up to double J, okay. So here what I have, what I have shown is, so the weld connection is not going to be like this, continuous. No, this is one member of the plate. This is another member of the plate. And we are going to join these two pieces together using this square type groove weld. Okay. So whatever shape here it is shown is the shape of the plate, outer edge of the plates. Okay. After pouring the weld, so the weld melts the parent metal itself and fills up this gap. So that is whatever shown in the dotted line. Okay, just to bind these two members together. Similarly here, in case of single V, and this is one member, this is another member. Once you put the weld at high temperature, it is going to melt the parent metal and that is going to penetrate, that is the weld is going to penetrate the parent metal up to this, the boundary is shown as dotted lines. Okay, so similarly, we have different types of welds, okay, in under groove welds itself, okay. Coming to fillet, fillet welds, this is the weld we are going to use widely, okay. So here, this is one of the examples. We have a lap joint. So a lap joint in bolted connection, if you remember, we are going to drill holes and we are going to find out how many bolts we need and we are going to provide that many number of bolts accordingly, according to the design requirement. So if say we need four bolts, so we are going to provide two bolts here, another two bolts here. But And of course you need to drill holes to put the bolts. But in case of welded connection, what you need to do is you need to provide the weld here and here. So it is going to be real quick. Okay, and also it is efficient. So this is one of the fillet, fillet welds and uh, here C and D slot and plug welds. I have clubbed slot and plug welds together. This is a slot weld and this is a plug weld. So when you look from the top, this is a member which is connected to this gasset plate. And when you take a cross section here, 
and look from this side this is what you are going to see okay so in what cases we are going to use these kinds of welds that is plug and slot welds say for for a given design say for example we need certain length of the weld which we are going to provide at the edge here we are going to provide the weld so because of some constraints we cannot provide the required length of the weld what we do is we are going to make some holes in the main member itself and we make sure that we are going to fill up that hole okay with the weld material that way once that is done that weld material is going to fill up this part of the main plate and also a part of the gasket plate or a part of the other plate so similarly in this section normally in case of tension members we don't prefer slot and plug welds so this is this is a plug weld and this is also used for the same purpose as this okay so in case of members subjected to compression we are going to go with this in if at all we need otherwise we don't provide but in case of tension members normally we don't provide these two kinds of welds so as of now you don't have to worry about those things because we are not going to design any plug or slot welds okay just for the sake of learning just i, I explained it coming to weld defects so there are different types of weld defects if you look here this is one member this is another member which we are trying to connect using weld so if you look at the dotted line this is the main line of the parent metal we call these two members as parent metal or parent members so once you melt the weld and put it here okay as i said a part of the weld is going to go into this and a part of this is going to go into this part so if our intention is to provide this much of weld there may be some gap between the top edge of the weld and the side of the of plate or the member so this is called lack of fusion so there is no fusion or there is no contact between the weld and the parent metal at certain point that is lack of fusion in other words it is incomplete fusion and if you are designing for full fusion and if you provide incomplete fusion the design may be adequate or we will end up getting unsafe design so we will have to be careful with that next coming to incomplete penetration so what it means is when we melt the weld so the molten weld is going to penetrate into these two metals so in this case what weld has done is it has penetrated to this member here up to this point to this member up to this point and we expect the weld to penetrate at this point as well in this area as well instead it has not penetrated it has stopped here as a result so there is going to be some air voids okay Th that is basically incomplete penetration okay next comes slag inclusion so slag is nothing but some you know some raw material we are going to get during manufacture of steel but here in case of weld so there there is going to be some slag developed and instead of this material you know being the whole weld material there will be some slags introduced into the <clears throat> metal that is into the weld okay that results in pores inside it again that results in reduced strength of the weld so again we will have to be we will have to be careful so this is slag material this is pores okay so both of them are possible pores are nothing but air pockets so slag is some some metal other than the weld metal okay so coming to air pockets here we have two plates which we are trying to join using a v shaped weld okay this is the weld material so once you fill up this gap using this weld material and when you put a base plate or backup plate here so once you put the weld there may be some air pockets left in this place 
actually the weld is supposed to fill up the whole area instead it develops some air pockets in that is not desirable so the, again that is one of the defects in the weld similarly there is undercutting again two materials we are trying to connect and we are supposed to fill up this gap using the weld material so what weld does is it is not going to fill up the whole part instead there is going to be some space between the top of the main metal and the top surface of the weld so that is called undercutting so this is undercutting and this is undercutting and also due to sudden cooling of the weld there may be some cracks developed so we are trying to connect say this metal and this metal together say we have two parts okay so when you connect them using this weld so if you cool it rapidly then the weld develops cracks this type of crack this is called longitudinal cracks and these types of cracks these are called transverse cracks so again that is another defect okay so these are the things i explained these things already air pockets cracks undercutting incomplete fusion incomplete penetration and porosity okay and this is the theory part for that so i don't go through this because i already explained it and these are the assumptions we make when we do the connection design using welds okay then design of groove welds so this is a groove weld and this is a fillet weld so as i said there are mainly of course there are different kinds of welds but we are mainly worried about groove weld and fillet weld even in that fillet weld is widely used and that's what we are concentrating on in this module okay so this is a parent metal this is another parent metal and we are trying to connect these two things using this weld this is called fillet weld similarly this is one parent metal another parent metal with the edges cut like this and we are we are trying to connect these two members using double v groove weld okay double v shaped groove weld okay this is the original boundary of the parent metal and once you put molten weld into it that is going to melt a part of the original metal and this is the shape it is going to attain finally okay and there are different parts in a well which we are going to make use of and we are going to get the same figure in the next explanation and i'm going to explain these things in detail okay so coming to this design of fillet welds see again two members and i am trying to connect those to those two members using a fillet weld so after the weld this is the way the weld gets filled up okay and this is the way the weld is supposed to get filled up and this weld joins these two metals so for design purpose what we do is we are going to inscribe a triangle okay such that so this is 45 degree this is 45 degree that means so it is if this is the length of the weld or leg size of the weld this will have the same size so in i am talking about this triangle once the leg sizes are the same for this triangle then this should be 45 degree and this should be 45 degree so whenever we say say certain size of the weld say 6 mm size well that means we are mentioning the leg size as 6 mm if it is 8 mm well leg size is 8 mm okay and so this triangle we are going to consider for any analysis and design purpose of a well okay and any additional weld material so it is going to add additional strength to the well but for design purposes we are not going to consider this part okay because there is no well defined boundary for this but here within this triangle we are sure of it so any additional metal beyond this triangular part is called reinforcement that is additional metal 
so that in that helps in increasing the calculated design strength okay design strength beyond the calculated value okay this is the weld face and this is the toe of the weld this edge and this is also another toe of the <coughs> weld so from here from the root point in this triangle from the root point so if you drop a perpendicular line to this okay this portion is called the throat this has the shortest length this has the shortest length that is given by s multiplied by this value that is 0 0.704 0 0.707 that is s multiplied by sine 45 sine 45 is 0 0.707 you can say 0 0.7 times the leg size or the weld size is the throat size so this is the throat okay why we need to consider the throat because throat is the shortest length see from the root to this line you can draw any number of lines like this okay so this is the shortest line and if at all the weld fails the weld fails along the section where we have the least area of cross section or least surface area not the cross section least surface area so least surface area is given by the throat thickness multiplied by the effective length of the weld the length of the weld runs perpendicular to the paper okay and another thing is here one of the main assumptions we make in case of design of fillet weld is fillet weld always fails due to shear remember it always fails due to shear so here effective throat, throat thickness as per 10.5.3 page 78 of the code book okay so again i explained this already this is 45 degree this is 45 degree in this triangle and this is the throat this is the leg size that is represented by s s is nothing but size of the fillet weld okay you know whenever they say size of the fillet weld is this much that means that is a leg size so this is the throat throat thickness is given by s that is the leg size or the weld size multiplied by sine 45 which is 0 0.7 so throat size ks equal to 0 0.70 s so for timing just please open page number 78 of the code book page 78 of the code book go to table 22 which is at the bottom table 22 at the bottom if you look at the table it says angle between fusion phases and constant k if the angle between the fusion phases is between 60 and 90 degree then what is the value of k 0.70 so what is between 60 and 90 degree angle between fusion phases is nothing but this angle so angle between this this surface of the metal that is the parent metal and this surface of the parent metal so what is the angle it is 90 degree in this case so when it is 90 degree the constant k equal to 0 0.70 that means if you look here throat ks equal to 0 0.70 s where k is the constant which which i got from table 22 okay so what is this 0.7 is nothing but 40 sine 45 degree or cos 45 same value okay that is the way it is obtained even if the angle between this surface and this surface is 60 degree the value should be taken as sine 45 only that's what the code says so similarly if this angle goes beyond 90 degree and below 100 degree that means if this surface goes back then the k value is equal to 0 0.65 similarly 101 to 106 degree it is 0.60 etc okay so as of now just you don't worry about this just remember this is 45 this is 45 
so and the throat thickness is ks that is equal to 0.7 s where 0.7 equal to sine 45 okay so coming to the throat area because for any analysis and design purposes we always take the throat area okay so because the reason is if at all any failure of the weld happens that happens along the weakest plane weakest plane is nothing but the plane having the least area least surface area so least surface area is the throat thickness multiplied by the effective length of the weld which is l small l okay so that is this is the throat thickness and this is the length if you observe the hatched area this is the failure plane or the throat area is it clear to you guys so again i have taken this triangle only the triangular part so i have written this and this triangular part will have certain length so out of the total length i'm going to take the effective length of the weld which is capital l so throat thickness multiplied by l will give you the surface area or of the weld along which the weld fails okay another name is failure plane or the throat area okay so i explained this next design strength of fillet weld you can go to page number 79 go to page number 79 under 10.5.7.1.1 please go there it says fillet welds do you see that so under fillet welds fwd equal to fwn divided by gamma mw is it not so fw1 is the nominal strength of the weld per unit area okay so what is fw1 that is fu divided by root 3 okay what is fu fu is smaller of the ultimate stresses of the weld or of the parent metal so in this case weld will have higher strength always than the parent metal so here the parent metal is a fee 410 so we need to consider a fee 410 value okay so that is fe 410 means 410 newton per millimeter square so in code 79 for 10.5.7.1.1 we are going to substitute 410 newton per millimeter square for fu that is the ultimate tensile strength of the metal divided by root 3 will give you the ultimate shear strength of that material so that gives fw1 which is the nominal shear strength of the metal that is the weld metal you remember that is the weld metal that is fw1 so once you divide that fw1 value by gamma mw that is called partial safety factor we are going to get fwd that is the design shear strength of the weld so whenever we say shear strength the value is going to be in terms of newton per millimeter square newton per millimeter square so when it comes to gamma mw if you go to table 5 on page 30 please go Go to page 30, table 5, partial safety factor for materials. So go to the last item, resistance of connection. Under that, go to D. Point D, it says weld, gamma MW. So it says the value is 1.25 for sharp, sharp fabrications and 1.50 for field fabrications so what it means is 
you can take 1.25 1.50 that means you are doing the connection using the weld at the shop at the shop then the quality is well maintained quality control is there then what you can take is for fwd value you can take gamma mw equal to 1.25 that results in higher value of F, fwd that's why we take gamma mw equal to 1.25 instead of doing at the shop that is at the workshop if you go to the field do welding field in the sense you are not doing welding at ground level you will be doing welding at ground level at one story level 100 story level or 80 story level hanging in the air you will be welding okay so when you do that so you cannot assure the same kind of quality of work so that's why we get or we consider the reduced value of FWD. To get the reduced value of FWD, gamma MW value should be 1.50 instead of 1.25. Okay, so for sharp welding, it is 1.25 gamma MW value, and for the field welding, gamma MW value is 1.50. Okay. So just, I'm not going to cover this design procedure. You don't need it. Okay. See here, coming to this, it says note transverse weld and longitudinal weld. So whenever we are connecting two plates, okay, are two members using fillet weld. In this case, there is a plate, indent standard flat, a plate, are flat we are connecting that to a gusset plate here okay then we are providing weld on three sides so these two welds are called longitudinal welds longitudinal welds are provided in the direction of the applied force and this is called the transverse weld which is applied or which is provided in the direction perpendicular to the direction of the applied force okay so as far as the strength of the weld is concerned, so in really speaking, the strength of the transverse weld is 30% greater than the strength of the longitudinal weld, that is per unit area. So what I mean to say is FWD value for this is 30% greater than the FWD value for longitudinal weld, okay? However, However, for all practical design, so what we do is we are going to assume that the strength throughout the length of the weld is the same, which is FWD. We are not going to take another 30% extra for this. No, we simply take FWD value. Is it clear to you? So coming to design of fillet welds for trust members, I hope guys, now, you have this steel table with you by KLV Ram. From now on, we need it. Okay. So please, please have it with you. If it is not there, try to get a Xerox copy of it today itself. Because without that, we cannot do anything from now on. So coming to this, fillet welds provided in longitudinal direction. So see here, we are providing fillet welds in the in the longitudinal direction only there is no transverse weld okay so this angle is connected to the gusset plate so when you take a section here and look from this side this is what you are going to see so this angle is connected to the gusset plate so that angle as as i said has two legs okay and in this case, it looks, this is an unequal angle. Unequal angle means the size of this leg is different from the size of this leg. Okay. And whatever leg connected to the gusset plate or to another member is called the connected leg. Whatever leg which is free is called the outstanding leg. Okay. Always remember. 
So whenever you apply some force, even the outstanding leg and the connected leg are going to be stressed. So what it means is, so whatever force carried in this member, a part, that is whatever force carried in this member, a part of it will be transferred through this weld and a part of the force and the remaining part of the force will be transferred to this gusset plate through this weld. Okay. And because of the additional area of the outstanding leg, more force is going to be transferred, transferred on this side and less force is going to be transferred on this side. That means P1 is greater than P2, where P1 please P1 plus P2 equal to PU. That means whatever PU force has to be transferred to the gusset plate, okay, through the weld, okay, and more force will be transferred, as I said, through this side. So that means P1 is greater than P2, whereas P1 plus P2 equal to PU. Is it clear to you? So here we are providing only longitudinal longitudinal <clears throat> welds, but no transverse weld. Okay. So coming to this. So once once P1 is greater, definitely we need longer weld here and shorter weld here. So coming to this. So these are all the calculations. Say these are the general calculations. So how much is side? Uh, on each side we have to provide the weld. So the, you just once once we start the problem on this, you'll understand this better. This is only theoretical part I have covered. In the examination, they may ask you how do you how do you design the weld? Uh, then you need to explain it theoretically or generally. In this case, you can you can write this. So once we start solving the problem, you'll understand what it is. Okay, so after solving the problem, please go back to this theory part and study it, you'll understand better. Okay, so that is case one. Coming to case two, so in some cases, what happens is because of some length restrictions, so we, we may not be able to provide that length, that is that much of overlap. So in this case, so this length is the overlap. Overlap means that is the length over which angle is going to come in contact with the cassette plate. Because of some reason, you may not be able to provide this much of overlap. So you may have to reduce the overlap. Once you reduce the overlap, then you will not be having enough space to provide the weld. In this case, we are going to provide welds on all three sides. That is like this okay so we are going to provide the wind along these three directions okay so what what it means is say for example to take care of pu design force you need say 120 or sorry uh, 240 millimeter of weld so out of 240 millimeter of weld we are going to provide certain length of the weld say 80 mm on this side. Just, I'm just imagining it. This is 80 mm. So another 240 minus 80, that is equal to 160 mm. So out of 160 mm, so longer length we are going to provide here, and the remaining shorter length we are going to provide here. How to find out those lengths and all those things once we take up the problems, uh, you will understand what it is. Okay. Again, this is theory part. So that can be once once you solve the problem, you'll understand what it is. Okay. So coming to the problem. So the problem says a 100 millimeter by 10 mm plate is to be welded to another plate of 150 millimeter by 10 millimeter by the fillet weld on three sides. So the size of the weld is six millimeter. Find out the necessary overlap of the plate for full strength of the joint. Take Fe410 grade steel. So this question, of course, carried six marks. Okay. 
So this is one plate of size 150 millimeter and 10 mm thick. This is another plate of thickness 10 mm and width 100 millimeter. So we need to connect these two things using fillet weld. So we need to find out what is the overlap length required to connect these two plates. So for that, so how much how much weld we need to provide? It says for full strength of the joint. What is the full strength of the joint? We need to find out what is the strength of these two plates, tensile strength of these two plates. Okay, once you find out the tensile strength of these two plates, of course, they will have different values. So, and this will have higher value because of higher area of cross section, and this will have lower value. So, consider lesser of those two values as the tensile strength of the joint. So, in this case, I have not taken the bigger plate because I am sure it is not going to fail first. And this is the plate which is going to fail first due to tension. So I have calculated the strength of this plate. So that is TDG equal to AGFY divided by gamma MO. This is as per 6.2, page 32. Please go to page 32 under 6.2. Six point two. It is in the second column. Please go there. It says design strength due to yielding of gross section. That is equal to TDG equal to AG FY divided by gamma M. Okay, that is the yielding of cross section. So what is AG? That is the gross area of cross section. So what is the gross area of cross section of the smaller plate, which is 100 millimeter by 10 millimeter thick. So that's why I have written 100 by 10. So what is FY? That is the yield strength of the plate material for FE 410 steel, FU equal to four, FU equal to 410 Newton per millimeter square and FY equal to 250 Newton per millimeter square. That's why I have taken FY equal to 250 and gamma MO is not 1.25, it is 1.10. Okay, so again go to page number 30, table 5. So if you look at it, table 5, partial safety factor for materials gamma M, it says the first item itself, number 1, resistance governed by yielding. Okay, that is gamma MO. What is the value for that partial safety factor? That is 1.10. Is it clear to you? So I have taken that value from that place. So after substituting, so I got the value of TDG equal to 227 kN. That is the maximum force at which the plate is going to yield. Of course, this is not going to yield because of higher section, as I said. So we need to design the connection to withstand this force that's why I'm going to call this as PU value. This is the ultimate force or design force or factored force you can call. Okay. So then I need to find out what is the total length of the weld needed. Okay. So what is the design strength of the weld? Design strength of the weld is, say, I don't know what is the total length. So that is a throat thickness. Okay. Throat thickness is given by point KS where K equal to 0 0.70 and S equal to size of the weld which is 6 millimeter in this case. If you look here, we are providing 6 millimeter weld that gives the throat thickness 0.7 S is the throat thickness multiplied by the total length required. Okay, LW multiplied by the throat thickness will give you the throat area multiplied by the design strength of the well in shear will give you the design strength of the whole well length. Okay, so LW as it is, so throat thickness is given by size of the well multiplied by 0 0.7 that is K, K value. Okay, 
fw1 is fu divided by root 3 410 by root 3 and gamma mw again whether it is 1.25 or 1.50 that depends on whether the welding is done at the shop workshop or in the field if nothing is given so to be on safer side we are going to assume that the welding is done at the field once that is done so gamma mw will become 1.50 so total resistance is given by that is the total resistance against shear failure of the weld of length lw is given by 0.663 lw that is after the calculation so we are going to get this value okay so by equating equation one and equation two so this is the external force or this is a force at which the plate fails and this is the total resistance of the weld so once you equate these two so i'm going to get the value of this equal to lw value equal to 342 millimeter so that is the minimum length of the weld you need okay so that means that is the minimum effective length minimum length means minimum effective length you need to connect this plate and this plate with minimum of 342 millimeter okay so out of 342 millimeter so we have this width 100 millimeter so this side we are going to provide 100 millimeter so the remaining is 242 millimeter so the 242 millimeter is shared by two sides equally okay so that is minimum effective length of longitudinal weld on each side of the plate equal to 342 minus 100 100 is this length okay divided by 2 121 millimeter so minimum effective length on each side is going to be 121 millimeter so that is 121 millimeter however if you go to page number 78 under 10.5.1.2 when it comes to lap joint this is a lap joint okay so i'm going to read out that paragraph please go to please go to page 78 first column 10.5.1.2 so it says in the case of lap joints the minimum lap should not be less than four times the thickness of the thinner part joint or 40 mm whichever is more okay that means four times the thickness of the thinner part so we have two plates we are connecting 10 mm thick 10 mm thick so same thickness means you can take 40 mm so that is minimum lap should be greater than or equal to four times the thickness of the thinner part that is 40 mm and also the code says it should not be less than 40 mm so in this case this is also 40 mm and this is also 40 mm okay so what it means is here in case the lap length becomes say 20 mm lap length however as per the code we have to provide a minimum of 40 mm lap but fortunately we have a lap length of 121 millimeter on this side if you remember so total is 342 uh, transfer weld is 100 the remaining is 121 millimeter in this case so whatever 121 millimeter weld we are providing is greater than the 40 millimeter recommended by the code therefore we shall provide a minimum overlap of 125 millimeter so instead of providing 121 millimeter which is a fractional value we are going to go and provide 125 millimeter so finally so what is the lap length required here it is 125 millimeter on this side 125 millimeter on this side and this is 100 millimeter on this side okay so this is the way this problem goes so with this i'm going to end this okay uh, tomorrow again come with the code book as well as the steel table okay guys and uh, we are going to continue tomorrow um, 
from 12.30 to 1.30. Now you can drop off. Thank you, guys. Be safe.